by looking at the gene expression, we can find out essentially what is being produced and what it may be causing the disease. And then once you understand the biochemical activities, you actually, you know, at that point, it's just simply the chemistry. And now you can apply the right set of math to it and to be able to solve the problem. Yeah. So I think this is a really important concept. So we, we have all read about bad bugs and good bugs, right? Um, in actuality, most of the microbes in our gut microbiome are able to produce bad chemicals and they're also able to produce good chemicals. And so let's take a hang on for just right there. So this idea of, you know, oh, I am taking these good probiotics that are good bacteria and your bad bacteria, you're saying that all that is really not true, that anything like a human being can be good or bad given a certain situation. Exactly. Just like a human being can be good or bad, it's it's the same person can be good or bad depending on the function. And so going to probiotics, Probiotics have been shown to have good effects towards certain symptoms, but also some people take them and they have bad effects. And so the same exact probiotic in one person can have good effects in another person or under different circumstances have good effects. So let's take a very, very simplified version. Let's say that one organism, just one simple microorganism that lives in your gut is able to produce pro-inflammatory biochemicals, they, they activate your immune system unnecessarily and your immune system starts to develop inflammation, but they're also, that microorganism is able to produce an anti-inflammatory biochemicals. These are biochemicals that calm down your immune system and, and there is no damage done to your body. For each one of these functions, that microorganism needs food in order to activate those pathways. And so depending on which food you feed that microorganism, it can either produce one of those biochemicals the other one, none of them, or both of them. So hang on for a second here. You're saying just if people were just looking at what organisms are there, they would never know that actually they may be behaving completely differently based on what you are eating. So what you're eating changes them and that means now you can use this knowledge to tell people what they should be eating for these people to do the right thing for you. Exactly. So that, that same organism that I just gave you an example of, is it bad or is it good? It's neither. It can be good or bad, depending on what biochemicals it's producing. And the biochemicals that it's producing solely depend on the food you're ingesting. Because that organism, microorganism, cannot produce these pro-inflammatory chemicals just by itself. It can't produce them from thin air. It actually consumes the food you ingest and specific foods and converts them into pro-inflammatory chemicals. And then it converts other foods into anti-inflammatory chemicals. So because we have that knowledge and we can measure those pathways, we can tell that person because they have that organism exactly which foods to eat in order to avoid the production of pro-inflammatory chemicals and to increase production of anti-inflammatory chemicals.